Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. So guys, massive apologies uh, that it's taken me so long, you know, to get another video out for my YouTube channel, but uh, I don't really have a good reason why I haven't been making a lot of content lately. Um, I think for me, you know, I just have to be in the mood to do so. You know, like anyone who's watched this channel for a really long time, you know, you guys know that, you know, this, uh, this channel is just simply a, a hobby of mine. And even though, you know, work hasn't really been the busiest uh, this year so far, you know, I've actually been indulging in a lot of my other hobbies. Uh, you know, instead of making uh, YouTube content, you know, I don't even watch a lot of YouTube videos anymore, you know, except for, you know, some of the channels that I'm actually uh, subscribed to. But, you know, I've been spending a lot of my time, you know, playing a lot of video games, you know, watching a lot of anime, getting through a lot of horror movies, and, you know, just trying to make up for lost time with regards to, for all the time that, you know, that I've been working away from home. So, you know, just trying to catch up with friends and, you know, just, uh, just trying to uh, enjoy life. But, uh, but also, you know, I kind of wanted to come up with a few ideas, you know, with regards to, you know, making some uh, content, you know, I don't want to, you know, touch a lot of the same stories or a lot of the same issues or, you know, make reviews on games that have been done pretty much by everybody. You know, I'm trying to f uh, find find a way, you know, to keep the topics interesting, but uh, in line with, you know, with what my channel uh, is about. Uh, you know, my wife just asked me, you know, uh, uh, when, when I get more free time, you know, do I ever plan on doing a how to complete video again? And those are the videos that, you know, require, you know, the most amount of editing. And uh, I am... My skill set when it comes to, you know, doing video editing is very caveman-like. You know, I'm nowhere near as good as, you know, my, my wife is. And sometimes it's it's hard to find the motivation to actually make a video um, that uh, that uses a script and uses a bunch of, you know, different, uh, different video game clips and stuff like that. But who knows, you know, I may actually find the drive to, to do it again. And my wife's got, got a really good setup, you know, with regards to her computer and, you know, uh, putting games on, on this computer and, uh, and grabbing the game footage that way. But uh, who knows, you know, maybe if I do get a little more free time, you might, uh, you know, I might uh, delve into that. But uh, since it's a long weekend here in Canada right now, you know, I thought this would be as good as time as any, you know, to actually get a video made. And I actually got uh, quite a few uh, topics in mind that I think would, would, would make for really good, interesting topics uh, on this channel. So anyway, let's get to uh, what the topic of this video is about, and I'm going back to do an episode of my personal struggles as a video game completionist. Now, for anyone that's new to this channel, what this topic entails is that I look at one of the games that I completed that has a bit of a history with me, and there's always been something about that game that really drove me to the brink of insanity with regards to trying to complete it. And even though in the year of 2024, I haven't really gotten a lot of video games completed uh, this year, I think I only got about uh, three to four games, I got into a routine of like uh, playing a lot of my PS5 and the moment I would beat one PS5 game and I was in the process of completing that, you know, my wife would want me, oh, well, this game came out, you know, uh, you know, you can, you can put, put that previous game uh, down and, you know, start to work on that new one. And then I'd start to work on the new one and then another game would come out and say, yeah, you don't need to complete that one. Let's, uh, uh, let's move on to that game and so on and so forth. And that actually happened with five back to back uh, PS5 games. So uh, currently what I'm trying to complete for the PS5 right now is uh, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion just because I spent over 200 hours trying to uh, complete Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth. And I got about over 200 hours put into that game and I still don't have it completed yet. So once I get Crisis Core Reunion completed, I only got a few more trophies left to go on that game, then it's back to Rebirth. But the first game that I actually completed in 2024 was actually the first video game that I actually managed to complete on the Nintendo Switch. I don't own that many Nintendo Switch games. I think between my wife and I, we only own about half a dozen. But 
the first video game that I actually completed in 2024. Uh, and it's a game that I have a very unique history with. And uh, it's actually a remake of the original game that got released uh, for the SNES. And that is Super Mario RPG for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, which, as I said before, is a remake of Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, you know, for the Super Nintendo. And I actually managed to complete this game. So, why does a game like this have such a bit of history with me? Out of all the SNES games that I've ever played, this one has one of the most frustrating completionist requirements that I've ever had to endure, that I've tried so many times, not only on the SNES version of the game, but when the SNES Classic got released and Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars got included as, as one of the uh, uh, games into the uh, mini SNES, I spent a lot of time trying to complete that version of Super Mario RPG and I still couldn't do it because of that blasted bane of my uh, that sorry that blasted bane of my existence with regards to, to the completionist requirement and anyone who's ever tried to complete Super Mario RPG knows exactly what I'm talking about and that is doing those goddamn 100 consecutive jumps I can't tell you how much time I wasted in my teenage years and in my late 30s, early 40s, trying to do that goddamn achievement. And I just couldn't get the timing right. Just couldn't fucking do it. And I used to practice it so much. And uh, the thing is, is that now I, I would never waste like hours upon hours doing it because I'd probably drive myself crazy. I really would. So what I used to do is at the end of the workday, and if I had some free time, uh, I'd just do it for an hour. And, uh, and if I didn't get it within that hour, that's it. Shut it off, turn it off. Because if I tried to do it any more than, than an actual hour, I, I'd probably break the system, break the game, and probably break anything in between because it was that super frustrating. I think because the timing is so tight on, on the SNES version, you know, you almost need to be a robot in, in, in the sense and just literally have muscle memory perfected to an art, you know, in order to do that accomplishment, you know, for the original uh, SNES version. So let me give you a, a little bit of a backstory of uh, why I really wanted to get this completionist uh, requirement done. Um, growing up, uh, I never had a PlayStation 1, you know, growing up at all. Uh, I never got my PlayStation 1, you know, until, you know, uh, until I was in the university, you know, in the early uh, 2000s. So, and as you guys have watched several videos on this channel, you know that up in Canada, NES games, SNES games, when they first came out, super expensive. So a lot of the games that I did, did play in my childhood had to be rentals. Um, and it's really frustrating, you know, to because I always loved playing uh, RPGs, uh, GRPGs. But the thing is, is that when you're renting a game for, for a two-day rental, especially when you're a kid and a teenager, that's, that's not enough time. That's not enough time to uh, to even beat the game, let alone uh, complete it. And you know, at the at the local uh, video game rental store, I got really excited because I had read stuff in in video gaming in magazines about Super Mario being being turned into a role playing game, and I thought that was such a great, interesting idea. And I remember, uh, I think it was in the winter of my. Uh, uh, um, of my final high school year um, in 1998, winter of 1998, I think, or, or it could have been the winter of 1997. Um, 
uh, uh, this game was actually available to rent at the video rental store and I was super excited and uh, I was actually going to spend the weekend you know uh, staying with my older sister you know who had her own house at the time uh, yet you know she she lived at a trailer there with, with her husband and I, I brought my SNES uh, over I got a bunch of snack food uh, I uh, you know my sister was having friends over and I said, okay, I'm not going to bug you because I know you guys are going to be loud and you're going to be drinking and you're going to be having a great time. So I'm just going to go go in the spare bedroom. I'm going to hook up my uh, SNES and I'm going to leave you guys alone for the rest of the night. And I ended up getting the game uh, in the late morning, got, got back to my sister's trailer um, in the early afternoon, and I literally played the game from then until like, 3.30 in the morning before I was tired tired enough to, to go to bed. And then I had to go back home, bring my SNES. And I didn't manage to beat it uh, during the first time I rented it, but I got pretty damn far. But I tried to milk out as much time with that game as I could. And, uh, and I only got as far as the uh, clock boss um, in, the, in the final dungeon. And after that happened, you know, I, um, um, I had to put it down. And it was actually um, a, a good bit afterwards before I had, had an opportunity to play the game again. So, you know, I could actually beat it. Because the problem with rentals is if you rented the game again, you know, other people had probably rented the game. And nine chances out of ten, you know, your save file was, was going to be erased. But that was just the harsh reality of, you know, renting, uh, renting uh, GRPGs especially uh, be for the PlayStation 1. You know, you only had two or three different save slots and uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, now when I managed to play the, play the game again, um, that is when, when I discovered all the extra uh, bonus stuff that that could be gotten in the game and, and you know, all the, you, you know, secret weapons and, and, you know, the best armor and, you know, some of the best items in the game. And... And the next couple of times that that I went through playing Super Mario RPG, that's what I strictly focused on. You know, I would read, you know, I would read FAQs, how, how to get everything, and and everything was pretty straightforward. And you know, for uh, for my friends who have kids or anything along those lines, this game is a great game to to start your kids with if you want to get them in, in the JRPGs. You know, like I said, you know, it's you know, to the more seasoned gamers, you know, this is probably much on the easier side, but thankfully in this version, the post-game content actually spikes up the difficulty a lot in this game. But if you're a parent and you really want to get your kids into JRPGs, this is a great one to actually start them off on because there, there aren't too many things that are too overly difficult in the core game itself. And, uh, and obviously w when you're dealing with highly recognizable video game characters, then, you know, it, it might be enough to actually get your kids, you know, interested in the JRPG genre in particular. So, going back to as I was searching the completionist requirements for this game, everything seemed pretty straightforward, but the one thing I was not looking forward to is, is they were telling me, like, Mario has to consecutively jump on an enemy a hundred straight times. And I just thought to myself, like, how in the hell am I going to do that? Because I remember just playing the game for, for the first few times and just trying to, uh, trying to get the jumping pattern down. And they said, you, uh, you know, you got to find a spiky in one of the first dungeons because, you know, when you jump, jump on them, you only do one damage. And, um, and, um, and it's not enough to, uh, to kill them out, outright. And I think as I was playing the game and I was using Mario's jump move, you know, I would get like 10 to 20 pretty consistently. But then when I really had the free time to start practicing on it, I just got really frustrated with it. And it's just, I would watch videos, I would watch techniques, and nothing seemed to work. I just couldn't get, get the timing right. You know, despite all the years that, you know, I practiced this, um, I just couldn't do it. And, and the best I could get was like in, in, in the high 60s. And, and I think the thing is, is like, I just don't think I have the right mind frame for it. That's the problem. Because like, 
there's always a thought in the back of my mind that if I start to have a good run, if I start to get like over 30, over 40, I, sh I start to get a little excited and I start to get a little tense. And if I get tense, then it screws up with my rhythm. And since the timing is so tight, especially with the original version of the game, any kind of like slight delay, or even if you're thinking about it too much, it's enough to actually screw it up. And I think that's what happened a lot of the times. You, you know, I'd get the 50 consecutive jumps, and then I'd just get, get too excited, and then I'd screw up the rhythm, and then I'd have to start back over again. So even to this day, guys, on the original, uh, um, uh, I do have an SNES cart of uh, Super Mario RPG, and I still have my SNES Classic. Still haven't done it on, on those versions yet. So when this game came out, when, when I first heard this game was coming out, I was going to get it regardless, just because this game is a very important part of my personal gaming history. It is one of the the first JRPGs that, you know, I did manage to, to beat uh, completely on, on my own. And I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get that damn jumping accomplishment on this game through hell or high water. So now this, uh, now this remake, a lot more things to do in it. There's a lot more things that, uh, uh, to complete. You get a huge difficulty spike, you, you know, in the post game content, especially when, when you fight some of the bosses again. And then a lot of the mini games have like, uh, even though the Switch itself doesn't really have trophies or accomplish or achievements like the, like the Xbox or, or the PlayStation 5, but all the mini games have like uh, medals. So, you know, if you do the best in that mini game, then, you know, you get a medal for it. And then it even has a, be a beastie area um, as well. So uh, there's a lot more things to do in, do in that remake of the game that uh, that will make it fun for uh, for completionists. Uh, doing uh, uh, doing the beastie area w was a bit of a pain in the ass because uh, you had to uh, you had to collect as many frog coins as possible, and then you had to bring it to this character that would unlock a section of your bestiary, you, you know, for a frog coin or a specific amount of frog coins. And, and the fastest way that I figured out how to do it was uh, when I was doing the uh, platforming with the, with the paratroopers and you had to, to do it. And if you did it in less than 10 seconds, uh, you know, the guy would give you five frog coins. So thankfully I did that paratroopers, um, sorry, paratroopers section so fast that, that I managed to get into a good rhythm and, and every time I, I climbed up there you know I got it you know below 10 seconds so I managed to milk out the uh, frog coins that way but when it came to doing the 100 jumps it was no easy challenge guys it was still difficult even though it's a lot more forgiving in the switch version uh, compared to the, to the original version of the game but I think the reason why I was having so much trouble with it was I was basing it on the sound cues. And wearing glasses doesn't really hurt a uh, help, guys. Like, uh, because when you're staring at such a big screen for a long period of time, you know, even blinking at the wrong moment, you, you know, can actually screw up your rhythm. And someone even recommended to me, and thankfully my wife is a piano player, that to make the challenge easier, use a metronome and time the metronome to the actual Mario jumps. But even this didn't work. I just couldn't get the uh, timing right when the timing would actually get like really tight with regards to, uh, to uh, getting the jumps correct. And who knows, guys, I might have to use a metronome, you know, when I do that stupid thousand jump rope thing in, you know, Final Fantasy IX. If, if I ever get around to playing that game. So, but I was reaching like good points in it much more often. Like I would like get to 30, 40, 50 jumps like really easy, like every second try or every third try, but I would just lose concentration. And the moment that you even have one delay in concentration, then you're gonna screw up the uh, rhythm and then you're gonna fail the one 100 jump thing. So after trying it for a few days, and, and that's just the thing, guys. I, I never spent too much time on it. If, if you hear that in the background, our uh, pet rats is drinking water. But uh, I would only try it for about an hour. 
and then I'd shut it off and then I'd go back to playing Final Fantasy 16 or whatever whatever current game I was playing at the time. But I realized that the sound cues were not helping. And, uh, and then I did some research on it online. You know, um, I was playing it with the Switch wireless controller. And, you know, there were people that were actually saying that, you know, uh, that you actually got to plug the controller in because it's much harder to do it when the controller is wireless because, because uh, there's a slight delay in the button input if you decide to, uh, uh, if you uh, decide to play, uh, play it wirelessly. And I wasn't going to do that, you know, you know, we had the pull out couch out and we had to turn into a bed and I was lying down and, you know, propped up with, with a bunch of pillows and I was just comfortable. I, I wasn't going to like sit really close to the TV and the switch to, to, to try to get the stupid accomplishment done. So I said, you know what, fuck it. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm going to do it wirelessly. Just, you know, even if the timing is slightly off. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just figure it out because I'm doing it enough anyway. And, uh, and thankfully I did manage to get it down to a good rhythm, but the sound cues of the jumps were still throwing me off. So what I decided to do is I decided to turn the sound off and just base it on visual alone. And when you get into a certain fight, with the spiky. And what you gotta watch out for is the enemy's shadow. And when Mario's feet comes down exactly at that point of the shadow, that's when you press the uh, of the enemy shadow, that's when you press the button. So I just kept my eyes fixated not on the enemy and not on Mario, but on the enemy shadow. I literally had laser focus right on that shadow and that's what I focused on and then the f first time that I started to fixate on the shadow and I had the sound completely off and I would do this like at 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning when my wife was already gone to bed because you know I didn't want to wake her or annoy her or like anything along those lines and, and the first time I did it that way I got the jump count to in the high 70s best I ever did. And, and I said, you know what, I think this might actually work. I think it actually, I might need a few more tries. So I tried it for about six to seven more times. And the next time, and after seven or eight, eight, eight tries, I finally got it. And this was the, the absolute last thing I had to do in that fucking game, in, in that Switch game to actually uh, to actually complete it and permanently retire it. And and guys, I was I was sweating bullets. The thing is is like when when and you know, I would count. I would count in my mind how many jumps I was kind of at. And when I got to 90, I was like so scared. I said, is is this going to be the run one? I don't want to fuck this up. I don't want to fuck this up. And in, when I got the 90, you know, I wouldn't even change my breathing. I wouldn't even blink. I just had to just just 10 more. Just 91. 92, 93, 94. And finally, because once you get 100, you can't, you can't jump anymore because the game will automatic, uh, Mario's jumping will automatically stop. So, cause, because I wanted to, to be absolutely sure because, um, because I heard people have horror stories that they stopped on, on the 99th jump thinking, thinking it was 100. So once I got the 99, and 100, I was still keeping the rhythm, expecting to go to 101, 102, 103. I didn't want to take any chances. So, uh, so when the when, when the jumping automatically stopped, and you know, I um, I killed the rest of the enemies because you know I was completely overpowered, and I still wouldn't get excited until I went to uh, uh, Monstro Town. Uh, I think that's where you go. I uh, it's been a while since I actually played it. Just hang on, guys. And I, I decided to look up the jump counter. And then when the uh, when, uh, when the person or the monster told me that I reached 100 jumps and he gave me, you know, the item that you get for, get, uh, for getting 100 jumps, I, I felt a huge wash of relief over me. 
And I said, finally, after all these years, I finally did that stupid um, 100 consecutive jumps in Super Mario RPG. And therefore, with that accomplished, the game was completed and permanently retired. But I'm I'm very shocked that the game didn't didn't drive me to the uh, to the point of going insane, because as frustrating as it was in the original versions, I still felt like I needed to do it just as a personal accomplishment for myself. And I'm glad to say that I finally did it. Now now the key question is is am I gonna go back to my save files? on the SNES cartridge and my save file on the SNES Classic and try to do it on those. And you know what? I probably might. But with this completionist requirement being as frustrating as it is, guys, there's no rush. I have a lot of other games I could be playing through right now and I'm in no rush to do it. I'm glad to say that I got it done for the Switch. And now the Switch version of Super Mario RPG is completed and permanently retired. But it goes to show you with regards to my gaming mentality and the way that, you know, I approach games, that it may take a long time, but somehow, some way, I'm going to find a way to get it done. And I'm happy to say, when it comes to those stupid 100 jumps, I managed to get it done. So anyway, guys... That takes care of another episode of The Completionist, and I'm glad you enjoyed my very troubled history with one of the most annoying accomplishments with regards to JRPGs, especially in the SNES era. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope to make some more videos soon, hopefully not, not four or five months from now. But I do have a few uh, few ideas in the pipes, so I uh, look forward to some new content, and thanks for ev everyone who uh, uh, left a comment, you know, on the Star Ocean, the uh, second story video, I do appreciate it. You know, one thing that, like, I am doing, guys, uh, because I was pretty bad at it, you know, especially... Uh, when I started first making YouTube videos, you know, I would barely respond to comments, but now I go out of my way to, to make sure I try to respond to everybody. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed my little story of Super Mario RPG and how doing that 100 jump uh, accomplishment almost drove me insane. So, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best.